arm David with his armor. <clears throat> and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand, and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistines. And the Philistine came, came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare his shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword, and with the spear, and with the shield. But I come unto thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and will give thy carcass of, will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into mine hands. Amen. Now many, pre many messages have been preached and taught on this passage. And as Sister Ola was mentioning, where did David get courage? Or where did David get faith? I don't think many in Israel doubted that God was real. Many times in the situations that we deal with, we don't doubt that God is real. Our doubt is, is he going to do what I need for me? You got the Holy Ghost most time. It's not whether God's real. You've tasted. You know he's real. Amen. And, and most of the time you've been through a path to get the Holy Ghost that let you know that God was real. Because you couldn't have navigated that path on your own. Amen. But the question, the question that we struggle with is, will God do it for me? And I'm going to say this day, not because I thought of it this morning, but because I've been convinced of this for a long time, that David did what he did, not because he drummed up faith, but he had a relationship with God. And it was based on covenant agreement. And because of covenant, he knew why he was there. He knew why Israel was there. And so he knew that what was going on was not the will of God. And because he knew that what was going on was not the will of God and what God's will was for them to have the land because God had put them there, he knew that God would help him if he fought for God. This is why it's so important that we have our relationship right with the Lord. Okay, so David's not trying to drum up a relationship. Hey, there's an emergency. I better pray through. But David daily was having a relationship with God. Amen. He did not need to be called out into the front to have a relationship. He did not need to be called to Bethlehem by Samuel to be anointed to have a relationship. David was out there with the sheep, and he said, as long as I'm out here, this is kind of probably, this is probably how he thought, as long as I'm out here, I know there's a God, and I, I love that God, and I'm going to pray to that Lord, and I'm going to have a relationship with him. If I can't have a relationship with anybody else, I'll have a relationship with him. 
because he's out with the sheep. A lot of times when you're out with the sheep, you're by yourself. Sometimes there's some other shepherds with you, but oftentimes you're by yourself. Amen. How many times we feel that God has left us alone because we feel by ourselves when God is actually giving us an opportunity to draw closer to him, to know him in the relationship just like David did. Amen. He's, he's not isolated us to make us miserable, but he's put us into a place where we're by ourselves so that we can look around and say, well, I might as well praise God. I might as well rejoice in the Lord. I might as well give him glory. Amen. For the things that he's done in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. And so oftentimes we miss that. I heard Mark Morgan, and some of you probably heard this story, but I heard he had a lady, a prophetess lady in his life named Sister Chenault. And she was a prayer warrior. And God would speak to her a lot like Samuel, like he'd speak to Samuel, just tell her the story and what's going on. And she'd call people on the phone and say, now, that's none of your business. Get out of there. Be, you know, this is the man that you're dealing with, and, and this is the situation. And she didn't even know anything. God would tell her a whole thing, and she related. it. Brother Morgan said, how did you learn how to pray? Well, they had a house out in a field, out in the country. And her husband, it was fate, God loved fearing man too, would go off to work or out to the field or whatever he did. And she'd be by herself, get lonely. And one day she, she was praying, she probably prayed this way for a while, but she said, Lord, I wish you'd just send somebody, somebody to give me company. She's washing her dishes back to the door. A little bit after that, the door slams, the scream door slams, shut. She looks, doesn't see anybody, but she hears footsteps. Somebody comes up to the table, the chair pulls out. Nobody visible. Jesus came. Jesus came. And she learned to have communion with Jesus. That's how she learned how to pray. She said, that's how I learned how to pray. And so sometimes God has got us in situations where he wants us to look to him. We're trying right and left to work out things. We're looking at our inabilities or our abilities or what we've got at hand. When God wants us just to trust in him, he wants us to look to him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. And in those situations, we learn where God enables us. If David had not been by himself, he would not have learned to kill a bear. If David had not been by himself, he would not have killed a lion because he learned that if God can help me kill a lion and God can help me kill a bear, God can help me kill something that's just a little bit bigger. He can help me to kill a Goliath. Amen. And so he understood that God's there. But David was developing a relationship. Amen. And he wasn't just basing his relationship on his feelings, but he, was, he knew something somehow about the word of God. Amen. I don't know where he got it. I don't know if his mother taught it to him, his father taught it to him. Somehow Samuel came around or some other prophet, but he knew something about the word of God and he understood we are not here by accident. He understood that we're not, I'm not living in Bethlehem by accident. Amen. I'm not in the field by accident. Israel's not in the promised land by accident. Amen. But there's a history over 800 years long, about a thousand at this point, amen, of God moving, creating a nation, bringing them out of Egypt by miracles and placing us here. And he said, if you'll obey my word and keep my words, then you'll be unto me a nation of priests, amen, a holy nation of peculiar people, amen. And so he understood, he understood that God had put them there. Do you understand where God has put you today? Do you understand that where you are, God has put you unless you've disobeyed God? But if you're doing what you think God wants you to do, God has put you where you are. 
Amen. And all you've got to do is if you're living right for God, you've got a covenant relationship. Amen. Matthew 26 and 28 says, he says, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Amen. Testament means covenant. Amen. He shed that blood to make a new covenant. He shed that blood to make a new agreement. He shed that blood that whosoever will can have a covenant agreement with God. Amen. If you can have a covenant with agreement with God, when you're in trouble, God's going to come to help you. When you need something, God's going to supply what you need. Amen. God's not going to let the enemy overwhelm you because you're in covenant agreement. Amen. And when the devil comes in, God is watching because he says, that's my child. That's my covenant partner. Amen. My blood is upon them. I have redeemed them. I've put my name on them. They belong to me. You don't have a right to hold them. Amen. And so you can go. Amen. That's how you run at Goliath. You know that you got a covenant agreement and you know why you're there. Amen. Didn't he say to his brothers, is there not a cause? Right? They didn't understand. They just said, hey, we got there's Philistines. We're Israelites. We got a war. If we don't beat them, they're going to be the Lord's over. David said, no, well, there's a bigger picture here. It's not just Israel, our army against the Philistines. This is God's people against somebody trying to encroach on God's possession. This is God's people against somebody that's trying to take away what God has ordained and given. Amen. And many times we don't receive or we back off from what God has got for us because we don't understand that we've got a covenant relationship. Amen. Yes, the lion and the bear builds up faith in David, but he's not really running on that. He's operating on, I've got a covenant relationship with God. Amen. You're not defying me. You're not defying the armies of Israel, or you're really defying God who is over the armies of Israel. Praise God. Amen. We're facing Goliaths today. We're facing Goliaths in this country. Amen. And, and people are facing Goliaths in their lives. But if you're in covenant relationship, you've obeyed God. You, got, you repented of your sins. Amen. And you got baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. And you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You're in covenant relationship. If you haven't done all three of those, you might know something of God, but you can't claim covenant relationship. Amen. Praise God. We've got something others don't have. Amen. We've got baptism in Jesus' name gives you something that others don't have unless they're baptized in Jesus' name. It's not just a formula. It's God's name put upon us. It's God's blood applied to us. Amen. Almost all sin are purged by the shedding of blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission of sins. Be baptized for the remission of sins. Amen. And so that salvation puts us into covenant relationship. And even if you fall out of it, if you'll get right and repent, just like the book of Judges, God will send some help. God will send some help into your situation. Amen. Why did God always come back and put up so much? Because he made a covenant agreement with them. God was saying, you might have broken it, but I haven't broken my side yet. You might not understand it, but I still got my side. Praise God. Amen. And sometimes we just, you got to stand up to the devil and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've been born again. I'm baptized in Jesus' name. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to live for God. Amen. I'm here because God put me here. I've been trying to do what God's asked me to do. You got no right, devil. You got no right, Goliath. You got no right to impinge upon me. You might be bigger than me, but I know a God. If I'll just move forward, I've got a God that's going to fight for me. If I'll just do what God tells me to do, I've got a God that's going to help me in the situation. Amen. That's why I can say I'm more than a conqueror. 
Amen. I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Through him that loves me. Amen. I'm not just squeaking through, but I got a covenant relationship. Praise God. People don't want to talk about covenant relationship today. They want to talk about salvation. They want to talk about pray the sinner's prayer. Find the sinner's prayer in the Bible for me, please. Find where they prayed the sinner's prayer in the Bible. Find that, please. You can't find it. But what they did say is repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The reason a lot of people don't get the Holy Ghost is they don't really repent. Repent doesn't mean just repent of the sins that are the big ones. Repent is not just the big ones, not the ones that society says are wrong, not, not, the, not just the big obvious ones, steal, lie, cheat, adultery, not just those ones, but repent also means turn from your own ways into God. Give up your life and give it to God. Quit trying to do what you want with your life and find out what God wants to do with your life. Try, quit trying to make your life and let God make your life. Let God start to speak into your life and direct you. Amen. If a person doesn't really repent, they're not going to get the Holy Ghost. That's why a lot of people aren't getting the Holy Ghost. They're not really repenting. They might even be crying at the altar. But just because you're crying, a lot of people crying at the altar are just sorry they got caught. They're sorry for the pain that they're in. Amen. But if they weren't in the pain, they wouldn't, they'd, they'd go do the same thing again. But when you really repent, not only do you say, God, forgive me, you don't want to do it again. You don't want to have to go to the altar and say, God, forgive me again. That doesn't mean that might not happen, but in your heart, you don't want to do the wrong thing again. You want to do what God wants you to do. We're talking about covenant relationship, relationship, relationship with God. Amen. When we go to move forward, when you go to fight, when you go to hold your position, it's got to be based on relationship with the Lord. Amen. Relationship with God. This, David understood this, and we're going to go look at Psalm 51, because I know I say it all the time, but this, this is a psalm of relationship. David understood that what God really wanted was a man that would listen to God. God, God was looking for a man that desired to do things God's way. That was more important than a perfect man that doesn't ever make a mistake. Because God knows there's no man like that or woman. But if he can find a man or a woman that desires to do it God's way, then God finds a person that he can covenant with and work with. Amen. So, so David understands. He says in, in verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, that will not despise. What David was saying is, I don't, God, God doesn't want ritual. He doesn't want form. He wants a heart that God says, I don't want you to do it that way. I want you to do it this way. You'll say, yeah, okay, God. He wants a heart that says, that says, Lord, I don't think I can do that, but if that's what you want me to do, I'll try to do it and believe you're going to help me. He wants a heart that says, Lord, everybody else is going to think I'm crazy if I do that. But if that's what you want, I will do it. He's not looking for form. He's not looking for ritual. He's looking for us to open our heart to him. He's looking for us to believe on him with all our heart, to let him be Lord of our heart. You got people saying he's Lord of all. He's not Lord of all till he's Lord of your heart. 
till you let him be Lord of your heart, your desires, your purpose, your will, your direction in life, you can't really call Jesus Lord. Amen. And we're in an age where we're fighting Goliaths. And the only way we can beat them, we can beat them, but the only way we can beat them is by waiting on the Lord and having that relationship and standing on what God has said. Now I want you to know something about David that's important here. Even though David's anointed, he does not force himself into the situation. He got there because his dad said, David, I want you to go see how your brothers are doing. He didn't say, hey, they've been out there 40 days and 40 nights. Nobody's moving. God's anointed me king. Let me just get out there. I'll take care of this. No, he's not even trying to get out there. He's back with the sheep. He's back doing the job that's been assigned to him. He's doing what's his... His authority, his father, is telling him to do. And I'm sure he desired to be there. At least his brothers thought that he made an excuse to get there. But David is there because he has been sent by his dad and really because God has set it up. So we have to have our relationship with God, but we also need to wait till God puts us into the situation sometimes. Just because we've got anointing and calling doesn't mean we can jump in. Yes, God's able. He's able to do all things. Yes, God might even desire to do that, use you to do something. But we need to wait till God the Lord puts us in to the situation. Again, this is why the Bible says, in our patience we possess our souls. Much of living for God is waiting on God. Waiting to understand what he's saying. Waiting to understand what we're supposed to do waiting to understand how we're supposed to do it, waiting to know when to do it. Again, we've got to learn to be patient. The Bible tells us so. So David is able to have the victory he's got because he's got a relationship and he knew the word of God said, I've made a covenant with Israel. David said, I'm an Israelite, so covenant applies to me. So I'm going to stand on the covenant because the Philistines are infringing on what God has designed, what God wants. Brother, you can have a place, any, you can take a seat any place there, okay? Don't worry about it. We got to understand that God is working. Again, we look over in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10 and 35. It says, But ye have need of, cast not therefore away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. After you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Listen, here, here, here's our problem. Here's the way our problem is. Let, let's, just, let's, let's transport us with the Holy Ghost back to Job's day. And we know Job is sick. And we know Job is living for God. And all of a sudden, we start praying in the Holy Ghost, God, heal Job. Guess what? We're spinning our wheels. It's not because we don't have faith. 
But God had purpose for Job to go through that for a lot of reasons. And even though we've got faith and we're praying for God, God healed Job, God delivered Job. Job, is our prayer is not going to be answered one millisecond before Job has completed what God has desired. And oftentimes we're frustrated in prayer because we're praying into situations, asking God to do something, when it's something that God has set up just like Job, that's got to run its course because God is doing something bigger than we understand. Amen. Now, Job doesn't, understand, doesn't say that Job ever got the full understanding, but we know that, first of all, God was showing off Job to the devil. Here's my, my main man. Oh, he just likes you because you put a hedge and you bless him. No, no. Job is a faithful man, and he eschews evil. So number one, he's going to show Job off. He's going to let the devil know, hey, you had a chance to serve me. You didn't want to serve me. There are some people that will serve me even in trial. There are some people that just love me for who I am, and Job's one of them. And I'm going to show you that Job does. Amen. That's one reason. But another reason is so we could understand that sometimes God steps back and lets the devil do something, but he's still in control, and the devil can't do more than God allows. How do you deal with that? By relationship. For I know who my Redeemer is. I know he knows the way that I take. I know that when I come forth, I'll come forth as gold tried in the fire. How did Job hold through all that? He didn't understand, but he knew God was right, and he knew God had a reason. Now, how are we getting there? We're talking about relationship. We're talking about relationship with God. Amen. David could do what he did. And again, look at David. He's got, here he is, he's, he's a shooting star. He's killing Goliath in faith. But it's not going to be too long, and he's, David's going to be running for about 7, 12, 13 years. He's going to be running. Sometimes God gives you an experience up front because he knows that you're going to have to run for a while before you get to the place that I have got for what I have anointed you for. Amen. So you read the Psalms. You read, in, you read in, in the first, you know, the Psalms are divided into books. The first book is what Psalms 1 to 41. And if you look in the, those Psalms six times, five times within in those Psalms there, you find David saying, Arise, O God. Arise, O Lord. Show yourself. Let not the humble be discouraged. Arise, O God. Let not man prevail. Show the nations that they are just men and not God. Why? Because this is David running. This is David with an anointing that's killed Goliath, but wondering where God is. We have to understand that sometimes in living for God, there's a wilderness we must go through. There's a wilderness we've got to go through to get to that promised land, to get the promises that God's got. Some he gives right away. Some he gives to give us faith to go the distance. But everybody has got a wilderness to go through to obtain the things that God has ordained. This is no time to let go of the Holy Ghost. This is no time to quit seeking God. If there ever was a time, this is a time to grab a hold of God. If you don't know God, this is a time to grab a hold of God. 
Amen. Right now is an opportunity. If you don't know the Lord, now is the time to try to pray, to pray and to seek God and to repent and ask God to change you. Amen. And if you got it in your mind, well, I know it's right, but I just don't think I can do it. None of us can. The way you do it is you just say, God, this is what you're asking us to do. Amen. And we're going to trust you. Amen. I'm going to open up. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to walk by faith and I'm not going to walk by sight. I'm going to trust the God that's brought me this far. I'm going to trust the God that's given me breath. I'm going to trust the Lord that's brought me this far in my life, hasn't let me go and made a way. Hallelujah. I'm going to trust the God that's given me an opportunity today to live for God and to serve him. Don't turn him away today. You don't know if you get a day tomorrow to serve God. Amen. You ask, how am I going to live for God? God will make a way. Amen. How am I going to get there? If God can make a way through the Red Sea, God can make a way through your situation. Let's worship the Lord a moment here. Lord, we praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. We magnify you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We don't have to be overwhelmed by the situation. Amen. Again, reading the Psalms, you see David often felt overwhelmed, but when he took his problem to the Lord, almost always the Psalm changes. By the end of it, he's talking about victory. He's talking about his relationship with God. He's talking about a God that's going to intervene and answer the problem. He's talking about a God that's going to give him victory. Hallelujah. Amen. We will feel overwhelmed sometimes. God allows it because we've got to understand we're not doing it by ourselves. We're not doing doing it by our own ability. We're not doing it by our intellect, but we're doing it by committing ourselves into the hand of a God that is able to deliver us. Amen. Not by power but by, or might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. If you're going to make it to heaven, it's going to be because you put yourself into the hand of God. Amen. How do you think you're going to make the rapture? You're going to believe that God's going to lift you up if you're right and take you to heaven. If you can't believe God to help you today, how are you going to believe him to bring you out of the ground and take you up in the sky when the trumpet sounds? Amen. But there is a God here today. There is a God that you can have. There is a God that will fill you with the Holy Ghost. There is a God you can know. There is a God that will give you joy. There is a God that will deliver you from your problems. There is a God that will set your feet on higher ground. There is a God that will apply his blood to your life. There is a God that will transform your mind. Hallelujah there's a God you can know today. There's a God you can know today. Hallelujah. Let's stand here. Hallelujah. If you want to know him and you don't know him, this altar is open here right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. You want to know God and you don't know him, this altar is open here right now. Why can't I just pray in my pew? You can pray in your pew, but sometimes God wants you to take a step of faith. Sometimes God wants you to get out of your comfort zone, say, Lord, you're talking to me. You're talking to my heart. You're talking to my mind. I'm stepping forward. Amen. What are others going to think? Lord, I'm putting that away. I need to know you. Amen. What are others going to look at? I'm putting that on the side. Lord, I need to be right with you. If I should take my last breath today, Day. Will I be right with God? Hallelujah. Start to worship him. Start to worship him. Praise God. If you got the Holy Ghost, but you haven't prayed through in a long time, this altar is open. Amen. If you need a refreshing in the Holy Ghost, this altar is open here right now. Hallelujah. If you need some answers to problems, amen, this altar is open here right now. Hallelujah. If you'll just start to pray, amen, Lord, refresh me in your spirit. Lord, give me the direction that I need. Lord, strengthen me here right now at this moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.